Hi all, in this video we are going to see about visual adaptations. So visual adaptations means a light adaptation and dark adaptation of which dark adaptation has been asked multiple times in various university exams. So we will be seeing both but we will uh, concentrate more on dark adaptation. So what's the definition of visual adaptations? It is basically that the eye adapts to different levels of light through light adaptation and dark adaptation mechanisms. What is light adaptation? It is a process by which the eye adjusts to bright light after being in dark. So suppose we were in the dark and suddenly we enter bright light. At that time we will have a difficulty. We will have an initial discomfort due to glare and blurred vision which will be um, recovered within 5 minutes. So that is called light adaptation. So what happens during light adaptation or how is it possible that our vision is normal within 5 minutes? That is because we have got a neural adaptation which is a quick response in which the sensitivity, sensitivity of the photoreceptors to light is decreased. See our problem is we have got a lot of light entering our, eye, our eyes suddenly. So the eyes will decrease the sensitivity of the photoreceptors to the light. Not only that the horizontal cells would inhibit the photoreceptors so that the overstimulation of photoreceptors are prevented. Along with this uh, there is a reduction in the response amplitude of receptors even if the light intensity increases. So for example even if there are a lot of photons or even if a lot of light is entering the sensitivity of the photoreceptors are less so naturally their amplitude of uh, signal transmission is also less. Along with all this we have pupillary constriction also so that the amount of light that is entering the eyes can be reduced. So that is how with the help of neural adaptation, some amount of improvement in our vision is possible in light adaptation. The second important mechanism is chemical adaptation. See, we know that when there is bright light, the rhodopsin in the rods will break down. It's known as photobleaching. So, now the rhodopsin or the rods is not able to act or it is temporarily inactive. During that time, the cones, which, which are basically less sensitive in compared to our rods, they regenerate faster and become dominant. So, it's initial, during the initial time, it is the cones that are, uh, they try to um, help in our vision because all the rods will be bleached because of the sudden bright light. Pigment regeneration occurs in the background, but it takes minutes. See, so in this case, for light adaptation, the neural adaptation is more important when compared to our chemical adaptation. So next we are going to see about the dark adaptation. So what is dark adaptation? It is a process by which the eye adjusts to dim light after exposure to brightness. So just like when you switch off the light of a room, suddenly it is all pitch dark. But then we will be able to see something, some uh, structures will be visible. Now the time required for this will is approximately 20 minutes and the initial symptoms are there would be a temporary blindness in the dark but then there will be gradual improvement in vision. So now we are going to see how this happens or what are the mechanisms of dark adaptation. So here also we have got a neural adaptation as well as a chemical adaptation. But the thing is the chemical adaptation is more uh, prominent for dark adaptation. So we will just see what the neural adaptations are. Just like the light adaptation, the quick response is a neural adaptation in which case the threshold of the cones is decreased, the retinal sensitivity is increased. So the retina would increase its sensitivity so that any photon that might reach the eye would be, would be able to um, produce an impulse. So the cones initially try to adapt but they are ineffective in low light. So in order to increase the amount of light uh, entering the eye, there will be pupillary dilation also. So basically there will be increased retinal sensitivity during the first 5 minutes because of neural adaptation. Now the chemical adaptation is slower and it will take up, uh, up to 20 minutes for a chemical adaptation. Now in this time what happens is rhodopsin regeneration begins in the rod because rods are more sensitive than cones. So as the le rhodopsin level rises the rod sensitivity also increases and slowly the rods take over and thus the vision improves in dim light. See, see we also already used to say that rods are better for scotopic vision or dim light vision. So in this case when the light was sudden off 
we know that our vision was less but it improves because there is increased rod option re regeneration that begins in the rods and then slowly the rods uh, the level of rod option increases and already the retinal sensitivity is increased so naturally the rod sensitivity is increased so it will be able to see more in dim light so this this chemical adaptation is very important for dark adaptation and remember here the hero is the rods so here we have a graph which shows the dark adaptation so on the y axis we have the log intensity of minimal effective stimulus that is basically the retinal sensitivity the log of retinal sensitivity and on the y axis we have the time in dark in minutes so we can see that in the initial 5 minutes is a cones that try to adapt to that dim vision but the cones are not that successive that is why here the retinal sensitivity is not improving it is after 5 minutes that the rods come into action and then you can see that the rods would increase the sensitivity it would increase the retinal sensitivity and improve vision and the time taken is around 20 minutes so this is the graph which shows the role of cones and rods in dark adaptation so So in the dark adaptation curve, we've got the cone adaptation first, which uh, because the cones were active under bright light, but once the lights are off, the cone tries to adapt quickly, but they have limited sensitivity in the dark and their adaptation plateaus early, that is within 10 minutes. But the rod adaptation, uh, they, they, they are highly sensitive to low light, that is they are useful for scotopic vision. The ro rods adapt slower but more extensively. So they continue to increase the sensitivity for more than 30 minutes or more. And they to take over the vision in the low light conditions once the cones have reached their limit. So that was the explanation of the dark adaptation curve. So what are the factors affecting dark adaptation? First, we've got the intensity and duration of light exposure. So longer or brighter the light exposure, we have slower dark adaptation. Because more light means leads to complete rhodopsin bleaching so it takes more time for regeneration that is why if we are in the uh, bright light for a longer time this dark adaptation would be slower so the next factor is the wavelength of the light so for red light the cones respond well but the rods are less sensitive which means rods are not involved in vision in red light so that the, when, when we are exposed to red light, it allows faster dark adaptation because the rods are already ready for dark adaptation. So that is why we say in red light, dark adaptation is faster. Whereas in blue or white light, there is more rod bleaching. So thus, that would be it would take time for adaptation. Another important factor is vitamin A deficiency. See, vitamin A is required for rhodopsin synthesis and thus vitamin A is deficient. Rhodopsin will not be synthesized easier. So thus it can lead to night blindness or otherwise called nyctalopia. So there will be difficulty in seeing in dim vision. So that can be answered. So the applied aspects regarding dark adaptation is that vitamin A deficiency causes night blindness because vitamin A deficiency will lead to decreased rhodopsin uh, regeneration and thus can cause defective dim light vision. Another important applied aspect is that pilots wear red goggles. That is because, see, pilots need to have better dark adaptation or faster dark adaptation because they might move from a uh, brightly lit area to a suddenly to a dimly lit area. So in this case, when they wear red goggles, since red will not stimulate the rods, they will always be ready for dark adaptation. And that is why pilots wear red goggles. So these are the two important applied aspects regarding dark adaptation. So to summarize, when a shortage is asked on dark adaptation, you can write the definition, the mechanisms, the neural as well as the chemical, draw the graph, then write about the factors affecting dark adaptation as well as the applied aspects. So I hope this video was useful for you. Thank you.